Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? How many of us truly want to know the honest answer to that when I first asked it? As a freshman, I would have asked that question with little genuine interest as well. Leaving high school meant I could be anyone, so back then I acted like someone who I wasn't. I sported the red backpack, walked around the dorm with the shirt off, wore crazy hats, pretended to be artsy, and if you knew me from high school, you would have known I was full of shit. <laughs> In high school, I was goofy, unique. At Stanford, well, I felt boring. I made no friends by acting like I was too cool for dorm meetings and freshman events that Cardinal Council put on. I stuck close to my team and other athletes because it was the easy choice. I didn't have to feel boring, and I didn't have to be unique. Hey, dude, how's practice? Oh, gosh, they made you run a ton? Shit, that sucks. Yeah, man, we play UCLA this week, and they're pretty good, I guess. That was every single one of my conversations. From the outside in, you could say I was an asshole, more eager to talk about myself than ask questions about you. I'd be busy talking about my game and how I played and how tough our coach was, Gunn. And when standing right in front of me was a girl that founded the first AIDS clinic in her country. I mean, can you, can you see the mismatch right there? Pretty, pretty apparent. Um, I, I was completely shallow. I limited my community because I'd already found one within my own team. Well, I consider them my brothers, and I've made very, very many good friends in the athletic community. I wish now that that wasn't all I'd done. I wish I could call my roommate Tony from Arroyo, freshman year, one of my best friends, but I can't. I wish I'd gone on ski trip to Lake Tahoe instead of playing Call of Duty with my teammates and watching Dexter kill people in my dorm alone. <laughs> and I wish I'd stayed up and had deep late night talks with people like I imagined myself doing and arguing over Settlers of Catan until 4 a.m. Say, no, you stole, you stole the ore, or just like, oh, I do that all the time. Um, but but now, now I can't, and it's too late. These events and these opportunities have come and gone, and now I only have empty memories of grueling soccer practices and campus parties. So what I've realized is if you want to get the most out of your experience, you got to show a little bit of leg, and you got to take some risk. Um, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break some damn eggs, okay? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'm coming to realize that I'm in an incredible environment where you get what you put out. So what I've realized is you got to throw that boomerang as hard as you can. So perhaps I'll make myself vulnerable to you now. Can I do this? <laughs> I don't want to break shit before other people have to use it. So it's three days until the physics midterm, and I'm enduring a grueling two-hour review session. The TAs, well, they're throwing out topics left to right, like Newtonian mechanics and gravity and F equals MA, and I honestly don't understand shit. And I'm like, at one point it crosses my mind, wait, maybe this is the wrong review session? Yeah, this is this can't be the one, but familiar faces quickly proved that wrong. And um, so I had spent the past weeks blowing off all the readings, browsing Facebook, and pretty much doing nothing during lecture and attempting to do the homework in the final hours before it was due. And I sat there at that review session staring at my blank piece of paper, and it seemed hopeless to even begin writing anything down. I needed a breath of fresh air to gain some courage to begin learning, or at least to keep myself from failing. So, but mainly I just needed to leave the classroom, which I did red-faced. And so outside the physics tutoring center, I sat there, hands running through my hair. Everything that had been going on for me that week, we'd, we were going to play UCLA, I had girl troubles, and the shit show that was this review session was just ganging up on me all at once. And so, pulling my hair even harder and harder, full-fledged freak out, and if you know me, I, you know I freak out. <laughs> I'm staring at the ground, sitting on this bench, 
is swelling up just full of emotion and stress, and right as I'm about to burst, it happens. A sewer snake released, <laughs> letting the dogs out. Now, um, well, my eyes lit up, and now, but now I, I was just confused. <laughs> I, I mean, really? Did I just shit my pants? I just shit my fucking pants. Wait, this was a feeling I didn't felt since the fifth grade when I didn't make the all-star baseball team. And it's happening to me as a sophomore at school. And the only thing clear to me was, I gotta leave this review session now. And so I began the journey back to FloMo. And if you've been in the PTC, the Physics Tutoring Center, it's over there. It's, it's an uphill bike ride, which I spent laughing and crying like a maniac, a fucking maniac. I'm pretty sure Taurus saw me and just like, Jesus, I don't want to come here anymore. <laughs> and yeah, don't let your kids come here. Um, all I knew, so I'd be, so also, if you know something about FloMo, you know who lives there, Kappa Kappa Gamma. So crab walking, lipping past these intimidating Kappa Kappa Gamma girls who I had met briefly, I rushed past them with just this horrified look on my face. And then I did a shower. And I'm, I'm, I was advised not to share with you all the gory details, so I'm not gonna drag you through that. But at that moment, I was so defeated and after hitting an ultimate low point that I was left unintimidated and unafraid, only preoccupied by other things. But I burst, <laughs> I burst into my neighbor's room Molly, Madney, Cindy, Rav, Allison. <sighs> I'd met a handful of time. I'd met these people a handful of time. I just shit my pants. <laughs> so it, it felt so liberating in more ways than one. So simple in the end. Simple, but hard. <laughs> I discovered that telling people who I really am is liberating and that being open to meeting new people, showing them gen genuine interest is rewarding and that I've always felt more comfortable and have made more friends by being the person I am rather than pretending to be someone I'm not. Um, and I understand, and so, sorry, I've, I messed up. Um, <laughs> and that, all right, I understand that I probably won't have deep relationships with all my dorm mates and classmates but that I will try to interact with them on a real level and in a real way. To be able to give the person time to reflect and say, you know what, Foster, I'm actually having a rough week too. And after losing my father unexpectedly and my grandfather to suicide within the last year and a half, it's, it's good to get the chance to think like, ah, fuck, like I'm going through a rough week too with you, man. So it has made me more empathetic and not only wanting to hear how different someone's day has gone, but wanting to get to know what's bothering them at the core and how their day is really going. So now I want to give you the opportunity to think about yourself. Wait, how am I doing? <laughs> Hope you're laughing. Because we don't have to wallow in our pity, but we can acknowledge it as friends and help lift one another out of it. So if you see me on campus, which I won't have shit in my pants when you do, hopefully, Please say hi, and if you ask me how it's going, I'll be honest with you, and all I, all I would expect is that you'd be honest with me. Thank you.